This training module is an overview of methods for estimating the Basin Development Factor, BDF, for highway sites. This information is needed to calculate the basin lag time by seldom for each highway runoff analysis. The basin lag time is commonly considered to be a property of the drainage basin and is used to calculate runoff hydrograph timing variables. This is training module 2.07 for the stochastic empirical loading and dilution model seldom. It is 18 slides and should take about 11 minutes. It was prepared by the U.S. Geological Survey in cooperation with the Federal Highway Administration. This training module has four learning objectives. At the end of this module, you should be able to describe the four characteristics used to calculate the basin development factor, identify highway runoff drainage components that contribute to the basin development factor score, examine a section of highway and calculate the basin development factor, and assess the precision of the estimate. This is a plan view diagram of the I-40 Highway Drainage System in Nashville, Tennessee from Federal Highway RD-81045. The small rectangles are the catch basins and the arrows connecting them are the storm sewer pipes. In this diagram, water flows from the high point at the bottom to Brown Creek at the top. The text on the right side shows the outline for developing the BDF score in each third of the basin. At this site, we have channel improvements and channel linings, concrete pipes, which are storm sewers draining curb and gutter streets in each third of the basin. The green line shows the approximate location of dividing lines for each third of the basin. Therefore, each criterion would be scored with a 1 and the BDF would be 12 for this drainage system. One would expect a quick response to rainfall, a short basin lag time, at this type of highway site. The diagram shown in the rest of the training module will show only one third of a highway site to demonstrate the scoring system because a site may transition from one type of drainage to another in each third of the basin. This diagram shows a section of highway representing one third of a highway site. This section of highway has country drainage. As the blue arrows indicate, runoff from the highway flows directly off the pavement into grassy swales in the median and on the shoulders. These swales are identified as having channel improvements because the swales have been designed as straight stormwater conveyances. These swales are straight, deep, wide, and clear flow obstructions. These swales drain more than 50% of the drainage area in this section of the highway. The other BDF factors are zero because this section of highway does not meet any of the other criteria for an engineered drainage system. This section of highway has a total score of one. Three such sections would produce a BDF of three. This diagram shows a section of highway representing one-third of a highway site. This section has country drainage. As the blue arrows indicate, runoff from the highway flows directly off the pavement into the grassy swales in the median and on the shoulders. These swales are not identified as having channel improvements. Although these swales have been designed as straight stormwater conveyances, the thick vegetation acts as a flow obstruction. The other BDF factors are zero because this section of highway does not meet any of the other criteria for engineered drainage systems. This section of the highway has a total score of zero. Three such sections would produce a BDF of zero. Mowing the swales will reduce the chance of flooding on the roadway or in the swale, but it would increase the basin development factor. In the picture on the lower right, we can see that the center of the median is still uncut. Water from the median would flow through an unimproved channel. However, we can see an interceptor swale next to the road which has been mowed. The swale conveying the highway runoff would qualify as an improved channel. We would set the channel improvement score to 1 if more than 50% of the area flowed to the mowed swales. However, this may depend on the frequency of mowing. If vegetation in the swale is normally short, we may use a score of 1. If it is normally long, we would assign a score of 0 for this section of the highway. This diagram shows a section of highway representing one-third of a highway site. This section has country drainage. As the blue arrows indicate, runoff from the highway flows directly off the pavement into grassy swales in the median and on the shoulders. These swales are not identified as having channel improvements. Although these swales have been designed as straight stormwater conveyances, the check dams act as flow obstructions. The other BDF factors are zero because the section of highway does not meet any of the other criteria for an engineered drainage system. This section of highway has a total score of zero. Three such sections would produce a BDF of zero. This section of highway has country drainage with paved swales. These swales are identified as having channel improvements because the swales have been designed as straight stormwater conveyances. These swales are straight, deep, wide, and clear flow obstructions. 
The channel lining score is 1 because these concrete linings increase below velocity. If these were riprap linings, however, these swales would not be scored as having improvements or linings. The other BDF factors are 0 because this section of highway does not meet any of the other criteria for an engineered drainage system. This section of highway has a total score of 2. Three such sections would produce a BDF of 6. This section of highway has country drainage with trunk line collectors. As the blue arrows indicate, runoff from the highway flows directly off the pavement into grassy swales in the median and on the shoulders. The concentrated swale flows drain to trunk line collector sewers. These swales are identified as having channel improvements because the swales have been designed as straight stormwater conveyances. These swales are straight, deep, wide, and clear of flow obstructions. The trunk line sewers represent main channels with improvements and channel linings. These trunk line collectors are storm sewers that drain more than 50% of this section of highway. Therefore, the channel improvement score is 1, the channel lining score is 1, and the storm sewer score is 1. The curb and gutter street score is 0 because the drainage flows directly over the median and shoulders to the swale drainage system. This section of highway has a total score of 3. Three such sections would produce a BDF of 9. This section of highway has curb and gutter collectors and a swale drainage system. As the blue arrows indicate, runoff from the highway flows along the paved gutter to a collector that drains the roadway. These swales are identified as having channel improvements because the swales have been designed as straight stormwater conveyances. The channel lining score is 0 because they are grassy swales. The storm drain storm sewer score is 0 because the collectors drain to the swale, although this could be debated. Also, if the gutters represent more than 50% of the flow length, this site may receive a channel lining score of 1. As indicated in the diagram, this section of highway could be scored as 2, but depending on the gutters and the design of the collectors, this section could be scored as 4. These curb and gutter collectors definitely would get a storm drain, storm sewer score of 0. These pictures show curb and gutter collectors with riprap and vegetated linings. In these cases, it's clear that these collectors would not be classified as being storm drains or storm sewers. The storm drain status of these collectors may be debatable. These are curb and gutter collectors. The picture on the left is an open channel with concrete lining. The diagram on the right is a collector with a catch basin and drainage pipe that empties to the toe of the slope. In these cases, it's debatable whether these collectors would be classified as being storm drains because they do not empty into other sewers or the receiving stream. This section of the highway has curb and gutter streets with storm sewers draining the roadway. The median and shoulders have a paved swale. In this case, the curb and gutter collectors drain directly to the paved swale. As the blue arrows indicate, runoff from the highway flows along the paved gutter to a drop inlet connected to the paved swale. If the collectors are paved or piped, then they would definitely count as storm sewers. Drainage from the median and shoulders also drain to the paved swale. Thus, this section of highway would be scored with a BDF of 4. Three such sections would produce a BDF of 12. This section of highway has curb and gutter streets with a full storm sewer drainage system. It drains the roadway, the median, and the shoulders. As the blue arrows indicate, runoff from the highway flows along the paved gutter to the drop inlet connected to the trunk line sewer system. Thus, this section of highway has a fully engineered drainage system and would be scored as a 4. Three such sections would produce a BDF of 12. This is a plan view diagram of the I-81 site near Harrisburg, Pennsylvania from Federal Highway RD-81-045. The small rectangles are catch basins and the arrows connecting them are the storm sewer pipes. In this diagram, water flows from the high point at the bottom to Pine Run, a tributary of Conduit Creek at the top. The green lines show the approximate locations of dividing lines for each third of the basin. In the upper third of the basin, which is at the bottom of the figure, the highway has country drainage with overland flow into swales that drain towards the creek. Therefore, we only have channel improvements. In the middle third, we have channel improvements, channel linings, storm drains or storm sewers, and in the lower third of the basin, we have channel improvements, channel linings, storm drains or storm sewers. We don't have any curb and gutter streets at this site. When we add up all the basin development factor criteria, we get a site score of 7 for this site.
Selecting the exact basin development factor value may not be critical for small highway sites. This graph is a scatter plot diagram showing basin lag time data from 493 sites across the United States and regression equations developed using the basin lag time, the basin lag factor, BLF, and the basin development factor, BDF, measured at these sites. Highway sites tend to have small basin lag factor values, so the difference among lag times across the full range of different BDF values are on the order of 6 minutes to 1 hour. We should try to derive the most accurate and defensible BDF estimate as possible, but the difference between adjacent BDF values probably is not critical for many small highway sites. We should pause here for a philosophical question. If we are simulating the swale as a BMP in seldom, should we use a BDF of 12 for the pavement area? The answer is probably yes. If we are using a swale for a hydrograph extension, then we should not also use the swale to slow down the runoff hydrograph as part of the highway site. In this module, we learn that the four characteristics used to calculate the BDF are 1. Channel improvements, 2. Channel linings, 3. Storm drains or storm sewers, and 4. Curb and gutter streets. We learn how to apply these criteria to common highway drainage structures for sites with various levels of engineered drainage components. We should be able to calculate a BDF using the examples of these engineered drainage configurations with the associated BDF scores and apply these concepts to other drainage configurations. It is important to develop an accurate and defensible BDF, but the exact value may be subject to interpretation. Fortunately, misspecifying the BDF by a few points may not be a critical error for modeling small highway sites.